All right, Sam, we're, we're on for lesson number two, week number two. I don't know what you want to call this. Yeah, that sounds fine. I'm very excited. Uh, I think I understand the game a lot better, so this should be more informative for me at least. Okay, cool. So just looking at the notes I had last time, uh, let's see, we covered that getting the third person quick was important, uh, getting efficient food source either by baking with extra bake actions or breeding animals and eating them in a cookery was generally the most effective thing, or you can have cards that support your food a lot. So what's your understanding about, I guess, we can talk about food first. Okay, so I had some, I played a couple of games throughout the week. Mm -hmm. uh, the last one I played, or the replay we're going to go through, my food engine was, a lot of it was through Manservant. Okay. Which I had, which I had quite a good time with. Uh-huh. Uh, but generally I find it easier uh, to use animals as food, like breeding sheep or pigs. Right. And I'm going I'm to share my screen here so you can follow along with what I'm doing. Uh, okay. So Manservant plus something led to a good game. We can fill in that blank later. And then generally yep. animals easier than baking. Yeah, I, I agree mind, both of those. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind baking. Um, it's just really hard to find the actions to do it because you can't, like, you can exchange animals for food at any time, but baking costs an extra action, so it's, it's hard to fit in. Exactly, yes. So you need to... Uh, so I think I briefly mentioned it last uh, week, but you want to minimize the number of actions you spend just baking. Yeah, exactly. Right, so uh, card helpers are significantly good for that, and... Uh, the the first extra set of cards that were released on VGA has a bunch of uh, cards that give you extra bake actions. So that kind of card is something you're looking for to ensure a good baking strategy. But yes, defaulting to animals otherwise, or stuff like Manservant is good. There is, uh, is it called Threshing Board? Yes, that's one of them. Yeah. I did get that one in the last game that we're going to look at. Okay, yeah. Threshing Board's one of my favorites. Um, Bread Paddle is also a card you can use in the base set. And then there's an occupation for it called Oven Firing Boy, but that one's uh, not I so noticed good. You ranked, I noticed you ranked Bread Paddle and Oven Firing Boy pretty low on your list. <laughs> oh, okay, you checked that out. Good. Yes. How helpful was that list, and did you watch the video with discussions? Uh, yes, I watched it. It was this, the uh, the spreadsheet's very helpful because I can just have a quick look and see what what's like sort of good, what's sort of bad. Right. Obviously, it's it's not obviously every every card needs context with like what it's linked with, but yeah, it's useful. Okay. Uh, um. Have you gotten any of your practice games with, like, four or five family members early? How early? As in before Urgent Wish? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. I, I, think, I think in most of my Reach 5, but I utilize Urgent Wish quite a bit. Okay. Uh, that's definitely a strong way to go about things. I think we talked about that briefly last week. Um, yeah. And you'll probably notice a lot of your opponents just building rooms on rooms on rooms to try to yes. get regular with your children. And uh, at the top level, that is definitely uh, an inefficiency in many games. So it's cool to see that you're, uh, or to hear that you're going for urgent wish for most of your growths. Well, I'll give you some spoilers. The guy who beat me in the game, uh, built house steward and got five rooms very early gotcha yep because if you're building a lot of rooms and no one else is well that's that's just big action advantage and that does a lot yep all right um i guess we can just hop right into the to the replay of your your solid game here cool yeah you can scroll down and look at the um the thinking times if you want ah true That's the replay. 
Oh no, this is totally fine. Yeah, no, 25 minutes is good. Um, cool. During my stream games, I'm obviously talking about some stuff, but I'm routinely over half an hour. So... And uh, it makes sense if you're streaming as well. Yeah, and I mean, when I'm not streaming, I'm still like 21, 22 minutes. So, yeah. No, there's definitely no AP there. Oh, and you were fourth seat. Fourth seat's a pretty big disadvantage, from my understanding. I think that's usually the case. Um, the disadvantage, in my experience, is that. 80 or 90% of the time it won't matter, and 10% of the time you just get destroyed by it. Yeah. So. All right. So we're in a draft 10 game with the base set. And obviously with draft 10, you know, there's all the combos forever. So personally, because of how I know the base set, I would probably draft towards very specific things or reasons. For example, I don't want to pass loam pit because there are so many day labor combos. Uh, but I also that don't want that, to... That becomes a theme. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't really want to pass <laughs> Carpenter's Parlor either because the having a bunch of cheap rooms, this is still a great room discounter. So, Well, you'll be happy to know I didn't pick either of them. Uh, I mean, there are plenty of good reasons not to. Picking Childless... And Shifting Cultivation's okay. I think Loom might have been a better choice. Uh, I hope you have, like, motion sickness pills or something, because what you're, what you're about to see may disgust you. <laughs> no, I mean, I know that you're, uh, you're learning the game, and as long as you're not, like, picking Wall Builder, I'm not gonna, you know, have to, have to use the restroom for, for that. Uh, okay. I, was, I was very happy starting with Childless and Plow Driver. Yes, uh, that's a great combo for sure. And when you picked Plow Driver, did you remember what was in your previous pack? No. Ah, okay, so in your previous pack there was a Scholar and was... a Manservant. Okay, well, Manservant I do get back. Right. I actually got both back, but I chose Manservant over Scholar. Yes, typically uh, beginning and intermediate players have a harder time running a quick renovation strategy. So this is one of the more, like, technical game plans that you're going to follow if you're going to do a quick stone house. Excellent. Um, okay, so, I mean, Lumber Mill I like a lot, but I consider it a bit of a non-bow, so, like, an anti-combo with Plow Driver. Yeah, that's, that's definitely fair, because I'm not going to be using wood if I'm upgrading the stone quickly. Well, that's actually not the biggest part of it, in my opinion. In my opinion, the two stone cost for Lumber Mill gets in the way of the assumedly three stone that you want to gather for a quick renovation. Right, that's true as well. And stone is not the easiest resource to get, so... Um, I, I have a sort of counter to that coming up. Okay, good. Got the Shepherd's Crook and the Roof Baluster. Okay, yep, the Roof Baluster is great. Um, yep. You don't need Threshing Board here. Clearing yeah, Spade could be fun. Pick. Three Field Rotation could be fun. The Shepherd's Crook definitely works. Now, I, now it's sad I that didn't... you didn't pick a Loom here. That's all right, I get <laughs> Loom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Somehow, I love Loom. Actually, it's one of my it's my favorite. Um, it's a great theme. It does a lot of stuff. Yeah. All right, Milk Jug, definitely your best pick here because the other two, halfway decent minor improvements, don't do anything for you. Moldboard Plow Large Greenhouse. You've already got those bases covered. Mm -hmm. Um. I feel like Consultant is not a good pick here. What would you pick? Would you get rid of House Steward? You could hate draft to the House Steward, but I would pick the Sheepwalker. The Sheepwalker, I find, just opens up a bunch of crazy avenues to scoring. 
So you already have a sheep generator. So having a second sheep generator doesn't do much. Okay, that's fair. Um, and this is a sheep user, and you can transform your sheep into boar. Uh, if you want to transform it into vegetables, you can turn all of your childless crops into, into just grain. Wait. Oh. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then maybe Sheepwalker can help you steal a major improvement late in the game by turning the sheep into stone. Right. Uh, but also countergrafting House Steward when you passed uh, some dangerous room building stuff, also good. I think. In hindsight, that probably would have been a much better choice, yes. Okay. Uh, but remember, it is a four player game, so counter drafting is only when you don't have anything specifically good to do yourself. Yep. Okay. All right. Loom and another stone house ock. Easy. Yep, man, so from... Uh, any... What was the thought process between Manservant and Scholar? I assume you were choosing one of the two. Yeah, so I was picking between the two. I just wanted more food, really. Okay, and was there any specific reason for that? Was it just like a generic food is good kind of idea? I was looking at my build and I'm thinking, okay, I'm getting some food from Childless if I build it. Mm -hmm. um, and possibly milk jug. So maybe do you think I have too much food or thing is Schol scholar seems I, I know it's high I know it's highly ranked, but it just seems awkward to use. Okay. I uh, I mean it's not the easiest card to use. Um that's part of why I say Stonehouse strategies are a little technical. Uh, because you need to just kind of blindly trust it the first few times you use it and then feel the power for yourself. Um, okay, yeah, so it's like, a, it's like a free action every turn. Exactly. It's like Cloud Driver, but instead of getting fields specifically, you're getting other stuff. Uh, can, you hover over, can you hover over Scholar? Yeah, sure. But, and the thing is, if I'm playing that and Cloud Driver, that's, that's a lot of food to be spending. Is that sustainable every round? Uh, it would be with Manservant, but of course, if you pick Scholar, you don't have Manservant. So, with this hand, I think it might be. Milk Jug, you can try to force to happen every round at the end of the game. Yep. Uh, and Loom is going to give you a bit of passive food if you have it played, and you will want to buy an oven or a cooking hearth if you go for Scholar. But there is the upside if you go for Manservant, you might not e need either. So. Okay. Um, I like both picks here. Uh, I don't think either of them is necessarily wrong as long as you know the plan with both of them. Okay, cool. At this point of time, I didn't really have a plan, but I was picking strong cards hoping there would be a good combination there. Yeah, and that's definitely what you assembled. Uh, there's stuff that kind of literally goes together, like Cloud Driver, Manservant literally goes together, Loom, Shepherd's Crook mm -hmm. literally goes together, but also ideas that go together, like Childless Cloud Driver go together, uh, because early stone house games don't want too many rooms. Childless says you need to pound out that first room as fast as you can, but then you just like forget about rooms the rest of the game. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of literal synergies and indirect synergies. I don't know what we should actually call them, but yeah. No, that sounds reasonable. Uh, okay, so then Frame Builder and Lasso. I'm a Lasso hater, so... All right, I didn't build it. Yeah, I can't really say what would be better. I mean, Acorn's Basket is probably better. Yep. Because you're almost guaranteed to play Childless, Manservant, and Plow Driver. Yeah, so therefore I have three occupations. Right. And then, if you're willing to spend a read on Lasso, then you should be equally willing to spend that read on Acorn's Basket. Very fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, Papermaker can be a combo with Scholar. 
So this is something that can help you afford the scholar. Right, okay, yep. Um, of course, that means you have to be grabbing extra wood in the middle of the game to pay for it. Not not a huge fan of trading away the wood. I've already found wood very hard to accumulate. Uh-huh, yep, exactly. It is. Whoops. All right, groom, stone house synergy, sounds good. Threshing board, were you considering anything else for the minor improvement? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. You like you like one of them better? You could make a case for the other ones. I'm not saying they're actually better here, but you're not uh, you're not going to use the text on threshing board. Is the problem? Oh, but wait, yes, I am. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, most of the time, plow driver is going to give you all the fields you need. So I would, when drafting this, I would expect this to be a wood to a point or a free point if you have lumber mill down. So many great ideas and so many of them not utilized. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, a lot of what I'm seeing here is based on just like way too many Agricola games played in my life. All right. Okay, so, so I had a question about general gameplay. Sure. As as first pick, you want to be uh, putting oh, down yeah. an occupation on right? the board. Um, resource market or lessons. Resource market. Oh yeah. So resource market mm. is the best early game space. Oh crap. <laughs> okay. It's not. Yeah, the... I, I I get a sufficient. Yeah. Okay. With childless. It is not. This is too slow for childless. But in all of the other scenarios, or almost all the other scenarios, this gives you half of the reed for your first room, yep. a stone for later, and a food, which is half of a day labor action. Yeah, so it's just better than most other things. It, it like combines a bit of everything. It's good. Right. And, I mean, the idea is you take it twice in stage one. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes you're not at the strongest table, so they just let you have it four times. Uh, or, you know, maybe it's highly contested and you can't get it when you want it. But uh, yeah. generally there are two tiers of moves in round one. Cheap lessons, expensive lessons, resource market, and forest. Your first action should be one of those four. Okay. Typically. I'm, I'm going to have to get you to look away during my turn. <laughs> um, and then for the second action of a round, uh, of round one, two wood, two clay farmland, day labor, meeting place are all pretty typical. Uh, rare situation, you could take one grain. With childless, you could yeah. absolutely take one read. One read feels like you'd be behind whoever took um, resource. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But childless is so good that it's worth it. Alright, I'll, I'll look away, I guess. <laughs> How uh, often, how how many times a game would you take, or would you go to meeting place? I don't go there very often. Really? Yeah. I go there quite often. Okay. How much value do you think you're getting? So, the minor improvement is alright, but I like, being first player seems to have quite a bit of advantage. Especially when it comes to, like, Urgent Wish for Children, I was able to get that twice in a row. Okay, so... Uh, early early game, maybe not this. so much. I don't know if I can pause this or not. Uh, you, you cannot. Once, once you start end of game, it, it's too late. <laughs> no, I think oh, I got it paused. 
Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure How you did can you do that. It. I think you just like click madly and hope it works. Cool. Um, so you, you can see I, I, I went to the hollow. Right. Uh, and then you didn't follow that up with improvements. I did not. Very interesting. I was... <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I want one of these major improvements down, but then I was like, I don't want to build a fireplace. It seems crap. <laughs> I wanted to save up for a cooking hearth. Right, and this doesn't get you there, right? No. <laughs> so, specifically to Childless, your first six moves of the game need to be room parts, play Childless, and build the room. Yes. So, you had resource market available to you first move. Yes. If I'm sitting in your seat, I take resource market and second action read bank. And then okay. hope I get three wood next round. And two wood is usually pretty available. Second action. Okay, and then third, yeah, then third uh, round I can build the room and play childless, right? Right, usually you can play the occupation first because no one else can build a room. Okay. And nobody's going to stable block you, uh, which is taking the spa space away just to build a stable. Spoilers, it happens. Really? For childless blocking? Uh, just from a first gamer. Okay, so, so after the point that I did take two clay, you would just go ahead and build fireplace? Yes. So the idea with that... Uh, well, typically you would sacrifice your first action to take two clay so that you can be the first to a fireplace for strategies that really like a fireplace. Uh, okay. Admittedly, your case, hand well. doesn't your hand doesn't yell, grab a fireplace. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll put a much higher priority on resource market. Uh, yeah, you'll find yourself a lot better suited for the mid game, uh, especially on early renovation strategies, uh, like yours. I mean, that's a third of the stone you need for your reno, yeah. or you can consider it your lumber mill. You can buy your lumber mill if you get two resource markets. Red at this point was very scary. Yeah, this is obviously a very strong combo. Um, and they might have ended up with that cottager, that loam pit that you passed. They have loam pit. Wow, uh, yeah. Uh, at a higher level table, people are watchful enough during the draft and they're not going to pass that to someone. Uh, I think you're very lucky to get two read here. Uh, two play is a really inefficient action. Yes. Uh, they should have taken two read. It was their first game, so they, they did make yes, a few mistakes, yes. as everyone. All right. Getting wood and then killing it. Good times. <sighs> I, I'm a big fan of small-scale farmer as well. It is a lot that's, of fun. That's one of my favorite ones. But it does inevitably lead to you uh, like building rooms late, and then if someone gets a lot of rooms early, they can just crush with action advantage. Yeah. Oh, very responsible for a new player to take their canoe first move. I don't know if that was actually their motivation, scared of canoe getting blocked, but... Right. There's no real need for Red to do this first action. There's no competition on day labor. Yeah. Childless, yep. Good time to do it. Second action, you can almost assuredly get some wood. Yep. Let's kill more wood, says Green. It's the junk room. Okay, so they've got... Uh, Minor improvements, throwing themselves food. This is two wood, yeah. 
So, Purple took two clay early to make sure they could play these two minor improvements. Uh, but if they waited around, they could have gotten four clay. Yep. Just something. Well, like like me, like me. <laughs> uh, not not round one typically. Someone will take the two clay in round one. So one of the the flows of the game is that four clay is almost always available in round three. Interesting. Yeah, two clay is good enough in round one, but in round two it rarely is good enough. Yeah. Okay, so I'm all I'm all ready to build my room. Okay, and you're going third. Oh, and, and player who doesn't know what they're doing is building a stable because they have sheep incoming. Yes. Unfortunate. I don't think they understood what they were blocking. There, you could make the argument that they knew exactly what they were blocking, and they're a pro in disguise. No. A pro oh. would not do any of the moves they did. I was extremely scared of red at this point. Why? But he keeps going to day, day laborer first. Right. Day laborer, day laborer synergy is very strong. So there's good ways to use their day labor output, and then there's not so good ways to use it. Um... They really should get grain in the ground if they're going to spend their first action on day labor. Uh, so if they use grain utilization with their second action, this is okay. But I think they do. Okay. But what's probably better for red is just taking two reed. Because they've got the five wood. They can do this whenever. They'll have this yep. like whenever the hell they want. Um... Yeah, so, you know, get in the room fight. It's good for you. I got more clay. Right. Um, well, now you have enough clay to renovate and buy a hearth, so there is utility for that clay. But you did put off your food until the last action of the stage. Which can be dangerous. Yes. Uh... I went to traveling player, I think. Right. Uh, but what if someone took traveling players? Then you'd be stuck yep. on resource market, probably. And Actually, do, oh, I don't remember. We'll see what I took. Okay. I might have taken resource market. Basically, if you're going to wait for food until the last action of the round, you're basically gambling. Uh, it's a risk not right, really worth taking. Right, because I can eat block. Yeah. Okay. So it was like six plays, a hundred percent gonna be taken if I don't take it. Uh, probably. I I would argue your opponents are pretty big wild cards right now. All right, there's the carpenter's parlor. So you're not gonna build next round either. Um, and so this is why the two clay and plow in round one is actually We're causing you to yeah. miss two procs of childless already. Because I'm arguing you could have for sure built in round three if you had taken resource market into reed bank for one. So I definitely should have been blocked from building a room here. Wait, did green not build? No. Oh, okay. But it would have put a major dent in my plans. I think they take the wood. Yeah, that's a gigantic error. That's an enormous error from Green. Um, so Wish for Children... I was very could... happy. <laughs> yeah, so you're not going to get anything from Childless then. Or you could not grow with your second action. I guess you could go either way there. Um, so basically why Green did the super wrong move is that a high percentage of the time, when you're the first person to grow, you can get six wood at some point in the next three or four rounds. Six wood will just be a thing that happens. 
and you can get it if you're the one growing first. You don't need to stretch to get it now. So what green, I assume, is going to do is going to take fishing second action because it comes with two reed and then be able to build two rooms at once. While it's tempting to build a ton of rooms at once with Carpenter's Parlor, it's not as good as just growing first. I think they build three at once, actually. Yeah, well, then that's Much falling into the, to the fallacy of trying to maximize small-scale farmer. Because you can do a lot better than one would with that extra action every round. Okay, but this is definitely a fine position for you to be in. Yes, I'm much happier now. Uh, I decide not to grow. It, okay. I just wanted I wanted to get some vegetables and uh, grain first before growing. So it is possibly is highly likely as a fallacy of not wasting childless. Um, well, remember that like you could just you know, with an extra action, take a grain. But it is the food also. Uh, and do you have any other crop sources in your hand? You don't. I, I decided to wait and so I got two or three turns out of childless. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I would be happy to delay everyone growing as long as I'm still growing first. Um, one of the larger strategic ideas is that there are game strategies that do well when Wish for Children comes late and game strategies that do well when it comes early. So game strategies that do well when er uh, Wish for Children comes early are this kind of thing. Big houses. Big houses and food. Because that's a way to just pile up a bunch of actions and then, you know, not starve. Yep. The game plans that go well when urgent or when regular Wish for Children is late are passive oh. action plans. Childless is passive actions, plow driver's passive actions, manservant's passive actions, groom is passive actions. Loom is passive food. So strategies that don't build a ton of rooms, rely on good farming, prefer Wish for Children to come out later. Whereas strategies with big houses want or even need Wish for Children to come out quick. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. No, okay. That makes sense. So with that in mind, I think skipping Wishful Children this round is really good for you. And your and the idea would be to block it from someone next round. Right. And if someone doesn't threaten to take it, well then you can wait longer. Yep. Five foods absolutely something you need here. That move I wasn't sure on, but five seemed like a lot to just not. It's take. a pretty good number, yeah. Um the other thing is that your alternative action was unknown, really. Uh, very unclear what it would be. Uh, if renovation had flipped, then I think renovating with a cooking hearth would have been quite good. Yeah. All right, taking a veg. That's fair. Um, You'd take a grain first? Yes, but I'm debating whether or not that's worth explaining right now. Right, go. Hey, hang on, I'll, I'll just no shut problem. my dog off. Hello. Yeah, sorry about that. All good. You can go ahead and explain. So, grain is an early game crop, and vegetable is like a mid and late game crop. 
And what I kind of mean still by in the that, early game. what? We're still in the early game. So right. when, when you're plant, when you're planting grain, you get three as opposed to vegetables, which you get two. Mm -hmm. And you can use the grain to bake bread to get food. Right. And vegetables. The way I typically use vegetables is try to get them to four, and then use them for points. Yep. Whereas grain, you need to get all the way to eight. They need to start earlier. Okay. Right. Understood. Yeah, so uh, I think the natural, like, timing of when things come out can help you dictate how much of it you need. So, like, because vegetable doesn't come out till late, the scoring table recognizes that. It says you don't need nearly as many vegetables to score maximum points. Yeah. Same with uh, pigs and cattle, right? Right. Yep. All right, that stable purple belt is finally holding a sheep. <laughs> All right, so this action you don't need to grow yet. I don't. Uh, nobody else has a room. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no I mean, I, I actually oh, okay. don't. Yeah. Ooh, frame builder. Frame builder with, without any wood in hand. Do you like that? <laughs> well, what I'm thinking <laughs> is that you don't need to save the clay. It's not clear what you're saving the clay for. You can spend three clay on a renovation and four clay on a hearth and be totally fine. So what you're playing this card for is to trade is a wood for two stone. Play, and two stone's going to be pretty easy to get next round. In my opinion. Also, if you're going to trade stuff for stone, there's you have a better card for that. Right, trading food for stone. Yeah. All right. Let's see if purple builds a room. If purple doesn't build a room, and, you know, it's their first game of Agricola, then you don't have to grow. Until next round. Okay, so now... Uh, I let purple build. I mean, I, I let purple grow. Okay. Yeah, I, I would not advise doing that. Ooh, what are you going to play? I guess it has to be Milk Jug. But then the issue is you're not going to have a minor improvement to play on your growth. Unless you take stone with your first action, you can play Lumber Mill, or if you take wood on your first action, you can play Loom or Shepherd's Crook, or Thrashing Board. I forget which one I played. But it looks like the table's going to give you six wood into growth. Uh, I'm pretty sure I definitely take six wood. Okay. I... I don't think I grow, though. Okay. I can I can just hear the increased panic in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out how you get to 49 with this. Yeah, so this is where green just goes bang. Right. So you absolutely cannot let green get away with growing here. Yes, I... I... I let him grow once, and then the next round I realize I really can't let him get a fourth person, so I grow. Right, and yeah, obviously I've, I've repeated this a few times, but you shouldn't let anyone get even their third person ahead of you in this situation. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the throwing away a wood here for the two clay. Because now you have two clay in your hand, and what are you planning to do with it? Yeah, that's fair. Um... So one thing that will probably help is thinking about how each building resource works or how it acts. So one of uh, my friends who's the strongest Agricola player in Norway calls wood a continuous resource 
in that no matter how much wood you have, you could probably use some more. Yeah. Yeah, for fencing, of course. Yeah, stables, then if you have a ton, you can build joinery or other stuff like that. Yeah. Clay is a resource where you need a certain amount and no more. Yeah, so you need some for renovating and you need some for a hearth or an oven or something. Right, and then sometimes you have a milk jug, so you plus one to that. But once you get the amount of clay you need, all the other clay is just going to sit in your supply in perpetuity. Be sad. Yeah. So, uh, not knowing anything about how your game is going to go, um, and thinking about what your hand and game plan looks like from here, I'm going to predict you end the game with two clay in your supply. I think you are correct. Yeah. So I basically threw away a wood for nothing. Yes. Yes. It felt efficient at the time. Like, hell oh, yeah, look, let's save look. two clay. <laughs> I, I'm not saying, like, uh, shame, shame. No, no, not not shame on you. Like, this happens to all Agricola players. You do something and then you tally up the math and you're like, oh, I just, like... Mm, wait a second. Wasted. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, on my streams, I occasionally get called out, like, once a month for just, like, a strong player's, like, uh, did you just, like, waste one of your actions in the middle game? And I was like, no. <laughs> then they explained. I wanted to ask, actually, <laughs> how often do people backseat game you at Agricola? Um, this is, uh, something I'd rather not answer in too much detail. Uh, okay. but... Okay. It has taken some practice for me to uh, make sure I'm sticking with my own thoughts as closely as possible. Right. Um, because at the end of a game, I want to know that I was responsible for whatever farm I just created. So that's kind of like partially how I work as a person. Um, yeah. There are plenty of people in chat who are interacting, asking me why I made certain choices over certain other choices. Some people like to suggest like move sequences. Um, and I basically have to tone a lot of it out and respond somewhat selectively. Uh, just kind of like, uh, I'm doing this for this reason. I like the timing of it. I like the total value of it, etc. And then mm -hmm. some questions I just am not gonna answer at the time getting back to the game what yeah. do you think about the amount of sheep that are there at the moment well you were happy to take a five food move earlier and this is uh, ten or more food for you uh, it is eight in, immediate in a, in, one, uh, one yeah. sheep in the house and then if you get loom down that'll give you one passive food every harvest you keep at least a sheep good um, in a high-level game, would you ever see that many sheep stacked up? Yep. Um, less often when it flips late. When it flips early, um, the first sheep pile can get to five or six before it gets taken for the first time somewhere in these two rounds. Yep. By the first fireplace. Um, and also in food-rich games, I would call this a food-rich game. Uh, Harpooner and Canoe are adding food to the game. Uh, scullery and, and jump room the, are adding food to the game. The day, labor. day labor is adding food to the game, right. Childless is adding a couple food to the game also. When everyone's adding food to the game, the first sheep pile is going to get bigger. Um, and you're not going to have competition for it, right? Who's going to take that sheep? Green. Yeah, that's what I was looking at the whole game. Like, no one can use it, so I'm just going to keep letting it build up. If Green thinks of it as a three sheep action... They'll take it eventually. They have capacity for three. Right, okay. Or at least they should take it eventually. I don't know if they actually will. Uh, sad. What do you think about Purple playing Day Labourer? Uh, really bad. Uh, they get food when they play Improvements. And they can take Reedstone food. I would take Reedstone food and Meeting Place. Or actually, I would Reedstone food and Fireplace. They have two clay for that. 
Yeah. That's, that's a very good move, actually. Um, and fireplace is good because it lets you eat the sheep that they're eventually not going to have space for. Um, one of the reasons Sheep Whisperer is bad is it forces you to have capacity for the sheep early. Otherwise, it's giving you two food every so often. Yeah. Or you're even worse, you're throwing the sheep away. So finding sequences that give you the most value while you have to do something crappy is an important skill in Agricola. One of my friends calls that failing forward. So purple short two food, but day labor is way worse than getting a reed, a stone, and a fireplace while getting two food. Yeah. Oh, and there's the reed. What's wrong? So they so they could have got a reed stone fireplace, but instead they just got two food and three, three reed. Yeah, I mean, that's not good. Uh, but it's not like you need that, that read. The poor sheep. Yeah, the poor sheep. Uh, the sheep that breeds is going to run away. The sheep that comes in is probably going to run away. Um, but now, the sheep that breeds. Are you saying those two sheep are breeding? Yes. Really? That's. I thought they had to be in the same area. Ah, no, they do not. Interesting. As long as you have two of the same type accommodated on your farm you can get a baby in the harvest uh as so long as you even can if they're in a se separate even if they're in like separate pastures right yes oh okay uh that's fair to expect more thematic rules but that is not one of them so my understanding was so what if you had like two different pastures with like four sheep each would it breed once or twice just once maximum okay, so only... per type is one bred animal interesting okay it is definitely not the most obvious thing would you take a grain here or a vegetable grain um and that's because of the scoring table and when you're likely to sow each of them yeah. So if you got a second grain here, then a single sow action of two grain, one vegetable will get you to six grain, two vegetables. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you take a vegetable here, you can sow up to three grain and four vegetables. But three grains actually the same points as one grain. And then the vegetables also come off faster, so you'll have a chance to re-sow them before you'll have a chance to re-sow the fields that are holding grain. Oh. So in terms of multiplying your crops, sowing grain earlier is better. And two is a lot better than one in a lot of ways. But, uh, I mean, you're, you're still learning how the game works, so I don't blame you for taking a veg. It's not like a vegetable's going to hurt you. Okay, so I, I decided I definitely needed to block grain before they got two more children. Good. Uh, I don't like the sh choice for shifting cultivation. Uh, I just had... I didn't know what else to build, so... Loom. Uh, loom. Like, obviously, yeah. Um, it does cost you two wood, which would put you down to three and even later fencing, but uh, you're likely to be the one taking the sheep pile. So yeah. this is passive food immediately. My thought at the time was, I'm going to get two fields, I'm going to just utilize my grain. I'm going to plant one of each. That's totally fine, too. But uh, in terms of trading two food for a field, later in the game you're planning on trading one for food for a field multiple times. Yep. But I agree that the timing of this field is particularly nice. Um, I have done this before where I get two fields and sow into them with childless crops before playing Cloud Driver. I don't think that's bad. I think that's totally fine. So with that specific motivation, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. All right. A loom would have been actually really, really good here. Mm, it's nice. But you are trading fencing tempo. 
like you you build your fences later in the game if you play the loom. And do you actually need that one food per harvest right now? Probably not, no. Yeah, you probably don't. And if you're sowing crops next round, then you have food and extra vegetables by the end of the game. And maybe that's not obvious, but... Uh, if you sow vegetables early, uh, you'll have time to re-sow them, which means you'll have enough to eat some and still get to four points. Yep. I do end with too many veggies. Yep. So, with experience, you learn this kind of stuff, you know? Take the grain before the vegetable, and other related ideas. Alright, they get the fireplace before they get their next sheep. Good on them. They still don't have space to breed, which is unfortunate. They played a woodcutter and haven't taken wood since. If I was around the table with them, I'd mock them for that. So if I remember, I think I plant my seeds. First move. Then I think resource market and renovate. Okay. That's all right. I would probably take the four wood first. Let, let's see what I do. I, I forget. Yeah, I would go four wood, resource market, or reed bank, and then grain utilization. Resource market first is reasonable. But uh, I'm going to contend that one of the reasons green ends up winning is this move. Yeah. The points from house, from house steward, when you have live scoring, are they automatically added? Yep. And you can just click on it and see. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. Um, this is a good move. Um, and that actually makes the, the resource market move even better. Um, is that green can renovate. And I, I missed that when, when looking at your position the first time. And that could definitely explain why you took Reedstone food there. Now, obviously, you don't have plow driver or manservant or room played yet, so being in stone doesn't immediately help you. Well, no. you actually could. You actually could just play plow driver or manservant. Yeah, okay. All right, so... It is lame. So you lose no food from playing it now compared to shifting cultivation. Uh, I do think playing manservant or plow driver is probably better than sowing, but that's because of a the specific time of when this is in the game. Sewing's very reasonable, though. Yeah, uh, I wanted to, uh, The main reason I sewed is because it was just before harvest, actually. Yep. No, that's good. Um, this is the latest moment in the game you want to sow grain the first time. Because what I mean by, like, the specific time of the game this is, there are three harvests... Yeah, and then you and can then, plant at the end. Yeah. Yes, you get to replant this field. And you'll have all three grain to replant, unless you're baking some of them. Likewise, end of round 11 is a great time to sow vegetables. One fewer harvest, but the stacks are one lower. Do you think I built Milk Jug too early? No. Okay. You uh, want to get sure down eventually? Fine. Well, obviously it doesn't do anything for five rounds, but yeah. when you played that improvement, um, you weren't necessarily eligible for any of the other improvements that did anything, 
and it didn't slow you down from feeding, it didn't slow you down from building fences, it didn't slow you down from renovating, um, and you do want it out at some point, and you're not going to have that many improvement actions yeah. before you want it out. So I think it makes total sense to have played it there. Okay, cool. Yeah, you had the clay to spare. What are your thoughts on uh, all the like occupations related to fishing? Like Harpooner, I, I see Harpooner played a lot. Uh, yes, a lot of players love Harpooner. Um, fishing combos are usually bad. But if you're at a table where people let you build the five rooms fast and grow relatively quickly, then it's good. Um, it's one of the ways to get that done is use Harpooner. But Harpooner throws away wood, right? So you have to be really aggressive on taking wood or have wood bonuses or have wood discounts or a combination of all that. Yeah, so Green's game only works throwing away so much wood to Harpooner and Canoe because of how many wood they're getting in other ways. Uh, because... Not saying it would have been best for you, but if you did take four wood last round, then green's sitting at three wood at this point yeah, in the it game. Them down. Significantly, right? Because I, d I don't know how this game ends besides, like, the point totals. And, I mean, it's going to be hard for green to win without getting a great fencing action and great sets of animals, I think. Yeah. And obviously wood is the means for that. And you're helping green farm because you passed that shift in cultivation. Yes. And another read action for purple. Another first action day labor for red. I'm yeah. still really scared of red at this point, but I probably shouldn't be. They're the biggest. So, what's the biggest reason you shouldn't be? They have no food engine. Wrong answer. Is that Though, correct? No? Uh, they actually do have a food engine now. They're baking on their occupations, and they have oven. All right. I just, I forgot they did plant earlier. They yeah. have quite a bit of grain. Yep. This is okay. not from going um, to day labor seven times. Is it because, that no, they have three people... I don't know. Why, why am I not scared of them? Zero wood. No wood. Oh, yeah. They have no wood. They're not showing any way to use wood, or to get wood. They're showing a way to burn more wood than usual. So, if we look at red, they've got eight points. Yeah. How are they going to fill their unused spaces? At least, like, four of the unused spaces without fencing. Probably going to need to fill those in. How are you going to make animal points? Fencing accounts for four categories. Uh, arguably five. You have the pastures, the three animal categories, and unused spaces. And fence, and fence stables, right? Uh, generally, if you have stables and not fences, that's also a waste of wood. Um, this is, if you think about fence stables as bonus points, that's probably a more healthy relationship with stables. Okay. Um, uh, stables are almost always wrong to build unless you're going to be breeding animals in them almost immediately. So, if you had built two stables with your first room, not that you had the wood for it in this game, but if you had built two stables with your first room, I would have said that's fine. Yeah, that'd be a waste. Oh, for what? So, the reason being is that you had the first cookery and a loom. So, if you built two stables, you'd be breeding three food each round. One from the loom and two from breeding sheep. 
Yeah, to be honest, I would have considered stables if I realized they actually bred when they were apart. Okay. That's, that's I think in this specific game, it probably doesn't matter because you you just weren't at the right number of wood. Uh, yeah. One stable is almost always wrong uh, because it doesn't give you capacity to hold the breeding animal. Fair point. So it's two or bust with your first room, and it's usually bust. And then at the end of the game, if you somehow have extra wood, absolutely throw it in your pastures, throw stables in your pastures, get some bonus points. What are you thinking about mini, is it mini pasture? That's a good card. Saves you four wood at the expense of two food, and it gives you tactical uh, advantages, it gives you space to breed animals, it lets you steal animals off the board effectively. If red had mini pasture, would you be more scared of them? Uh, no. They're still eight wood short of 12 if they have mini pasture. Okay. But why, it, why, why 12 wood? So 12 wood uh, gets you four tight pastures. Is, you, that, is that generally how you want to be uh, structuring your farm? Four tight pastures? If you have easy ways to fill the rest of your farm, yes. And I'm going to argue that tiller and seasonal worker counts as an easy way to fill the rest of your spaces. Okay. Um, in the extreme, uh, at high levels of play, sometimes you see really crazy farms. So, like, you could create a strategy where you fence two spaces, two small pastures, put stables in them, and, like, have a zillion fields. That could work with this kind of card setup. Uh, but, uh, I advise against it. So, fencing... Okay. 12 tight, or you can skip one or two of the internal fences and still have good capacity. Uh, but one small pasture doesn't make me scared of red. Uh, in this space set, there's a called, card called Rammed Clay, which lets you use clay for fences. Yep, I've used it before. That is way scarier to me than Mini Pasture is, because this is giving them three fence pieces every time they get a field and a vegetable. If, if they have rammed clay. So rammed clay is the thing to be scared of. If you think red has rammed clay, yes, be super scared of them. Okay, that makes sense. Plow driver first moves okay. Um, three wood is honestly fine here because of how badly the table needs wood. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking to play manservant also, then, yeah, you need to prioritize the occupations for sure. I think I play both manservant and plow driver this round. Okay. Uh, didn't notice that green had played master bricklayer. Um, so they're getting... So that well cost them one wood. I would say green oh has... Oh my god. I would say green has given you more reason to be afraid than red has. Because where's the competition on major improvements? Uh, I mean, Purple wants Basket Maker's Workshop, probably. Alright, can you hover over Master Bricklayer? Did I just read that correctly? Oh my god. So, all their major improvements are discounted by 3 stone right now. Okay, that, that, explain, that goes a long way to explaining why they win. Yes, because they are at a table that let them build fast and grow relatively fast and then not compete on the major improvements against a master brick yeah. player. So at higher level tables, people will try to jam the Play major improvements. That, yeah. yeah, but uh, I mean, they, they, uh, this wouldn't happen in the first place. So Okay, so this is kind of an important move tactically to notice. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe not necessary for you to notice at your current uh, experience, but um, if red is taking meeting place here, that it means mean, I take meeting place next round? Uh, it does give you a good opportunity to do that, but red is going to use their first move to do what?
They're going to wish uh, for children. So yeah, the yeah, primary the primary reason to use meeting place in the middle of the game is to be able to wish for children as the next action. Yeah. And the fact that both red and green have empty rooms makes that pretty much a slam dunk, in my opinion, as what's going to happen. So that means if you're... And you have the last action of this round. So that means you can set up with your last move what's going to be available with your first move next round. Mini Pastor is actually great for you, too. Yep. I do use that. And I would say that there's not too much pressure on this second lesson space, but it's still the right move tactically for you because it lets you set up the board on your last action because now you've done the two actions you feel like you need to do. Yeah. So what you're saying is if no one takes the wood, I can let the wood build up for six and get six wood. Exactly, yes. Exactly. What do you think about purples? pasture set up uh i think their whole game shows that they don't really know what they're doing um would would you at least fence in the stable no i think okay. this will help them get more points by the end of the game because now they can hold as many sheep as they desire plus one cow plus one pig okay they can cover all their bases this way, and I'm betting that they're not going to get around defensing again for whatever reason. Um, I think that's bad strategically to have your only fences of the game be a box of eight capacity. Uh, but yeah, you get, you get points for multiple pastures. Right. Uh, so I think that's, you know, strategy from a beginner. It shows. But... Um, I do think this is maybe their best shot at fencing-related points for the rest of the game. So, uh, because it gives capacity for a third animal type. Okay. Yeah. Because you don't really want to like be in the end game and then not be eligible for a two-point cow move because you don't have space for it. Yeah. So uh, I think this three wood move is actually terrible. I think that's the last action you want to take. Yeah, I want to let it build up. Unless you're I didn't, planning, I to didn't take, correctly. Yeah. Unless you're planning to take three more to start next round, that doesn't seem too likely. So I'm pretty sure my, f oh, I think my first move is mating place, and the reason for that is I want it to be first for urgent wish for a child. Okay, and you're aware that's a fifty-fifty. Yeah, I'll, I'll, so I was, it's fifty-fifty, but I was also happy with cultivation as well. Okay. I think you should be less happy with cultivation. To the point where okay. you might want to just do something else. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is you have the field part already, right? So the bonuses yeah. of cultivation are that you block it from the table and you get the sow. But if you let Plow Driver do all your plowing, you can get a bake when you take an action sowing. Or yep, that's cool. uh, you could just not take an action sowing and be okay. Or another thing to consider is that if cultivation flips first, there is just more plow actions for the table to start with. And you yeah, and Red are not going to be competing plows and purple's a beginner so they might not be competing on plows so i don't think blocking green out from plows is going to be a thing that happens here even if cultivation flips so i think four wood is a better move here but mini pasture is fine or, or, yeah six wood is a much better move last round right um and i think threshing board is way worse than mini pasture green fished like their life depends on it because it does they have no other big source of food 
I don't know, some plow help. Goes I'm on. just helping everyone plow here. Yeah. Well, I don't think Brad's right. going to use it. What are you thinking about the position of the field? Does it matter at all? Uh, Perfect, they put it right in the middle of their farm. I mean, it's it's a dominated position. It's it's a strategic, like it's technically bad. Um, gives them less options for fencing. So uh, the best plow space is probably this one, top left. Yeah. Is there anything wrong with my structure? Nope. Okay. Um, how many fences and fence spaces are you planning to have? I have no plan at this stage, but as many as possible. Okay. Um, then you want to keep these eight spaces open, and then, but not really, because you have so many fields for free. Um, at most, you're going to need six spaces for fences. But because of how many plows you have, and if you take cultivation later, then you have even more plows. You can fence tight this game. Yep. So, yeah, uh, you can plan out your fencing arrangement oh, by how many spaces you you're cry? taking. Sorry, what was that? Did that just make you cry? Uh, taking three wood last turn and three wood now. <laughs> it's, it's not perfect. Uh, but you can plan out how many spaces you need to fence on. Uh, based on how many fields you expect and how many rooms you expect. Yeah. Interesting move by purple there. Oh, oh they cancelled again. Yeah. Alright, plow is definitely good. Grain utilization, definitely good for red. They need to bake a grain and then eat one raw. Oh, no, they don't. They're getting bonus food. Yeah. yeah. So red needed that action. So if for whatever reason, two opponents were be like having terrible games and red was your only competition... I would consider just sowing a vegetable just to take out an important move from red. So in, the, in that situation, if it was taken, would they be forced to um, take bigger cards? Or would well, they just... actually probably not, because they can play an occupation and bake a grain and then two, eat two grain raw. Oh, right, they have bread paddle. Yeah, so it might not have been worth blocking. All right, groom is fine. It would feel better with more wood in your hand, though. Yes, it absolutely would. Oh! There go the pigs. Green bought another major improvement, as they should every round. Okay, my first two actions for this round are... Well, it's, I, it sounds like you hit Urgent Wish. Urgent Wish, and then Meeting Place again. Mm. Am I valuing Urgent Wish for a child too much? Yes. And you need to up your wood requirements need to raise your valuation of wood. Because uh, Groom's going to eat away three of your wood here. The reason start player is okay, meeting place is okay, is only if you play mini pasture. I do. Okay. But otherwise, um, you're wasting that action. Mini Pastor is definitely not a waste of an action, though. Yep, that placement is good. Yep. 
in my mind, it was like meeting place was a no brainer because I'm like, I'm going to get the urgent wish again. How stupid are these people? <laughs> I mean, in a lot of ways, you're right. Um, but your fences are too far behind. Yeah. I would say if you had fenced already and then taken the sheep action, that's when you can just go to meeting place with abandon. Um, and that's actually my favorite thing to do on heavy farming strategies is get done with most of your farming by this point in the game and then you have no regrets about spending an action on meeting place to take the strong action at the start of next round. Yeah. No. So a uh, lot would, of, you, would you build this around the stable? I would, yes, because you want to get as many sheep as you can. Okay. I don't know if the table will let you, but if you get sheep with your last action here, that's a coup. Oh, purple is going to fence again. Um, Hedgekeeper on its own would have been so much better than Woodcutter for green, uh, for purple. Yeah. Because I don't know how many Woodcutter actions they spent. Uh, but this gives you three extra wood every time you fence, so. Wow, well, you are getting the sheep. I am getting the sheep. There's no way you don't take it, right? I really hope I do take it now. I think I do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's huge points. Your sheep are now going to breed to seven. Uh, and you have a card that can get them to nine. Yeah. Six is the key number for loom, because that's both a, break, a threshold for loom points and threshold for normal sheep points. That was extremely quickly how you did that math, because I do end up getting to nine. Oh, well... You have five now, there's two more harvests, and you have a consultant, which doesn't add to the breed. Yeah, but like even remembering I have consultant, then that, then that I may play it, that's impressive. <laughs> because that is what happens. Yeah, it's a two-point consultant. Uh, you might underestimate how many times I've played this game. Though one of my better skills is predicting stuff very early on in games. Pretty handy skill to have. Yeah. Okay, do you think green needs all this um, stone when they already have discount? Oh, so this doesn't give them a discount on renovation. So they need oh, five okay. stone to, to get their house to stone. Right. But they definitely don't need the sixth stone. Uh, so I think reed stone food would have been better than two stone that they just took. The only reason yep, to take two of instead of one and a food is to block it from someone else. And uh, I think they have pretty good odds at getting Basket Maker's Workshop if they want it. So I think this, the reed on resource market also works well for them. Yeah. So yeah, I, I do think that's just wrong for them to take the sixth stone, but the fifth one is definitely good. Okay, I wanted to ask on the major improvements as well. Sure. How often are these improvements like joinery, basket maker, how often are they going to get taken in a high level game? Great question. Um, depends a lot on the card sets. Yeah. Um, until you're playing with all the cards, basket maker's workshop can be pretty underwhelming. Uh, people like to use read on rooms and build more rooms than they should, even at a pretty high level. So, Basket Maker's Workshop, not good unless you're seeing a lot of read added to the game. Yep. Pottery is pretty reliably good. Um, there are a lot of cards that add clay to the game. Uh, Lone Pit in this one. Yep, yep. Uh, the next set of cards that you might dive into has a few big-time clay adders. Joinery is not great, because you'd rather use the wood on things on your farm. Yep. Um, the ovens are dependent on 
how many people have good baking strategies. Uh, a strong baking strategy is very happy with both ovens for themselves. Um, unless it's a baking strategy that has extra bake actions on it. Because one of the big advantage to buying the second oven for yourself is that ovens come with the bake action. So this is a progressive way to get a bake action. Okay. I, I didn't, yeah, I never would have considered buying both ovens. Yeah, so that's actually a thing you really want to do if you have a lot of grain and no bake helpers. That's interesting. Because you buy your clay oven, it lets you bake one grain into five when you play it. Yeah. And then once you buy a stone oven, while already having a clay oven, you can use the clay oven and the stone oven immediately. Oh, you get to bake but with both of them? All the things you can bake with. Wow. Okay. So that stone oven purchase usually lets you convert three grain to five plus eight. Yeah, wow. So that is a huge key in running a good baking game without other assistance, is buy both ovens. Interesting. What about the well? Well is very strong. Um should be bought in 95% of games by someone. Okay. Uh, so it's basically, it's basically trading three stone and one wood for four points, plus you get food. Five food. Five, yeah, plus you get five food. Um, with cards that give you dribbles of food downstream, you do want to think about the net amount of food as its value, but remember that it doesn't count as a feeding engine. This is helpful food, but it's nowhere near enough to feed your family reliably. Mm -hmm. um, manservant doesn't count because it gives you three instead of one. Uh, and then the fireplaces and hearths, I would say, uh, well, I mean, it's kind of tricky to say because like, sometimes they're upgraded from each other and whatnot, but ending yeah. the game with one or two available is the most common. Okay. Does that get close to answering? Yeah, no, that's 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 very useful. Um, when I was teaching Agricola to a super strong gaming friend of mine, he also asked that question. You're the only two people to ask that question, like the frequency of uh, major improvement purchases. Seems useful to know, because it, it's, it's just like, for me, obviously, because I'm probably not prioritizing wood enough, as you said, mm -hmm. it's hard to find the time to buy like the basket maker or the pottery or the joinery or whatever. Right. I don't, I, I don't have enough resources to do all that. <laughs> well, you do have enough clay for the pottery. Not that it's available anymore. But yeah. if you find yourself with two random clay, you should think about pottery. maybe having pottery or stone oven later. Okay. Having extra stuff that just sits around, obviously not the best thing, but it does give you more outs for point moves. Um, you're fencing now. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, in terms of tactics, it's not bad at all. Um, no, I, I did consider it because I considered that green has wood and they probably would like defense. Absolutely. And red. And, and red, and red. Yep, absolutely. Um, Five instead of six is correct because you're getting a groom stable next round. Uh, yeah, I do good. think the better arrangement is to get this square instead of this one. Why is that? Uh, because it is cheaper to fence again next round just in case. Okay. Very unlikely to matter, but... 
Yeah, I mean, I shouldn't even bother explaining right, of that course. to you right I, now. No, 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 I understand. I understand the math, yeah. But, like, that kind of math thing is not really what's going to help you win more. <laughs> every, every little bit helps, I understand. Yeah, but, like, getting half a point of knowledge at a time is less helpful than me explaining, like, a five-point idea. Okay, I cultivate here, but I decide not to bake bread. Is that the right move? Uh, so instead of throwing this grain away for three food, you're turning it into a point and a grain. Yes. Okay, I, mean, sounds, I think yeah. that's an obvious sounds yes. like no brainer. Yeah. And you have enough food for the rest of the game, because Loom's going to give you four food, two per harvest, you have three more coming from Manservant, you have two extra vegetables, which is six food, and you have Milk mm -hmm. Jug coming in once or twice, which is another six food. So, you definitely don't need that food. Even at this point in time, I felt like starved for food, to be honest. But I, I guess I didn't realize I had the extra vegetables. Oh, okay, yes. You only need four for points, which means you'll have yeah. two spare. And you don't have any bonus cards for vegetables, extra vegetables. All right, cow is definitely fine here. Now you really shouldn't be worried about food. Or maybe you're not remembering the loom. Uh, I did take into account the loom, but I still felt starved. Okay. Uh, I mean, counting out food is not something I did until I got very experienced, so I can understand that. Um, just like your fence arrangement is a tiny bit awkward, this field from red is just wrong. Should be there. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Especially since they are wanting to fence, most likely. Yep. And this is just... I mean, the loss is like one wood, so that's... Sometimes it's a point. Rearrange... Doesn't always show on replay the same way it doesn't show on other people's farms. I could refresh right now and see that you moved all these sheep up there. But I don't think I moved them to like go. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know. I think you had to. I I did move them eventually. Yeah. I guess this doesn't waste anything from red if they were going to fence with this arrangement. Okay, yeah, you can see I have a pig. Uh, I mean, right, you can't yes, see you I just, have a pig, but I have one. a pig. Yes. Yep. Wow, green just got... Lost, um, green got fence blocked. But they can buy a joinery and build two stables, and they do have some fences, so... They're going to be okay. Yeah. In this last turn, I wasn't really <laughs> sure what to do. It seemed like I had way too many people for the actions on the board. Right. Um, so you were a little point capped here. And part of that's because you don't have more wood to fence with. Um, part of it's because you didn't find time to play Lumber Mill, which is a source of points in your hand. Yeah. Um, Consultant is a two-point move, so I would consider doing that before taking the single cow. Uh, but you probably read the board right in that Lessons is not going to be that contested, so... Yeah, I figured with two Lessons spots open, I was probably going to get one of them. Right, and you don't care about the food penalty on the second one. Yeah, so there, uh, it is really just experience that'll tell you with time, like, how to save yourself good point actions for the last round. So to have a couple moves possibly not doing much here 
Uh, I wouldn't put too much stock into it. You're probably fine. Do you like how I separated my cows and sheep? Uh, I mean, this is just the bug of replay, I think. I'm pretty sure you have seven sheep in here, two cows here, and one pig in the house. I think that's your only I, I've, legal way I've, to arrange things. I have eight sheep, I think, but yeah. Seven. Where do I get my... You get your eighth and ninth from... Oh, wait. Huh? All right. Yeah, no, I'm pretty uh, sure I had that. Yeah, okay. You probably did. Yeah, yeah. D don't yeah. worry about replay. Oh. Yeah. I thought this wasn't bugged in the replay, but apparently it is. Uh, you can bake one for free. Yeah, so, which I do. Yeah, but... Not that it matters. Right, it doesn't matter. You don't need that two extra food. Compared to uh, my last move, my last move, I absolutely made a mistake. I should have taken the clay away uh, from, from green. Sure, I don't think that makes the difference in the game, though. No, he would have won anyway. Right. Just, uh, I mean, taking major improvement just to. I guess you can't play any of yours. Never mind. Uh, technically, this also doesn't matter, but uh, there's a tiebreaker of most building resources remaining. So if you have more, then that's worth like half a point, effectively. So four read is the most, the biggest stack on the board. That's that's useful to know for later, actually. Thank you. Yep. But of course, it's a last resort if you can't find anything to differentiate yourself. Point wise, I mean overall pretty good. Like forty nine is a lot of points. I was surprised my school kept climbing. Right, so like, Plow Driver, Loom, very strong cards. Yeah. Groom when you already are doing Stone House stuff, and only when you're doing Stone House stuff. Also a very good card. So. If we consider a world where you have a few more wood, you have enough wood to fence tight and therefore cover all your spaces. Yeah. So you have two more pasture points just from that, just from having more wood. You probably have a better animal action somewhere. For instance, you might get a stack of pigs instead of ending with one. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, in the end, given your hand, you got, I mean, that, those are the only two things I would say are missing. And okay, so even, just, just a couple of extra passages. Get more wood, fence earlier. No. Yeah. And I think we saw the points in the game where I was thinking heavily about wood and you were on other tracks. Though, I mean, a couple of those other tracks were very fair, like when you renovated to clay or... No, when you renovated to stone. Uh, okay. Obviously, Frame Builder was a net negative for you. Um, yeah. But, I mean, this is stuff yeah. you learned with time. So. You can see my two clay just sitting there. Yep. Okay, so honestly, that frame, the uh, Frame Builder waste was one wood. And then not setting up the three lumber, the round that I was second six. pick. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's the four wood right there that would have made the difference. Yeah, sure. Um, of course, if you don't play Frame Builder, you do need to take a stone action somewhere. Uh, but I guess you could say replace Frame Builder with Roof Baluster. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have two stone left over. Instead of one. Is that true? Uh, uh, maybe not. Well, Ruth Bellister would have given me one extra, so yes. Okay. Would have got three stone instead of... I say two stone from Frame Builder. Yeah. But I'm wondering why you have one left over. Did you take another Reedstone food action somewhere? 
Yeah, I think I did take resource market at some point. Okay, so maybe you get to save that action. I guess you need the read from it. Eh. Uh, regardless, if you have a extra stone, then maybe you get to play lumber mill instead of threshing board, or I don't know for sure. But yeah, more options. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot of a lot of promising things here. Like, I think you're getting a lot of good ideas. I think you got away with some things that maybe you shouldn't have. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff here. Like, figuring out how good these stone house strategies are is is more of an advanced thing. I would generally have people try to have games like Greens as they're learning the game. Uh, and just feel the power of having more actions than anyone else. Yeah. Um, so when so say you want to end up with a five room house like green, saying it's not good to build them all at once. You want to get your first room out to get your first child out. Well, build as many as you can while still being able to grow early. Right. But that limitation frequently ends up being one yeah because how the hell are you going to get four read that early and then ten uh, wood or i mean four wood in that case you could be sneaky about carpenter's parlor so if you get two resource markets that's just trying to be a good player if you get two read in round four you're still just you know policing the read and then it's not too hard to get five wood and then Oopsies, now you're a start player in round four with Carpenter's Parlor. No one's built a room yet. And in round five, you build two rooms. And you have the first two growths of the game. And then the game's over. Hmm. Um, that's the most dangerous thing. Okay, is it possible without Carpenter's Parlor? Yeah. Or you just... Yeah, you just... Uh, you don't have. Uh, that means you don't play any cards in stage one. All you do with your actions is take room parts, and if the other players are too busy playing cards, well, you can get extra actions and play your cards with those extra actions later. Hmm. Um, so, one theme that you might notice is that in the abstract late game occupations are better than early game occupations because late game occupations don't restrict your early moves which can be so crucial to either getting room parts setting up feeding engines yeah so the more flexible you are timing wise the more good actions you can take uh, so part of why you had the option to get six wood was because even though you didn't take it it's because you had taken care of so many of your other responsibilities or requirements okay. so a lot of being really good at agricola is not only knowing what you need to get done, but getting it done as soon as possible to get flexibility with the other stuff. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot to balance in the early game. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, the challenge is what keeps me playing it after so many years in games. I definitely feel like I could play this a thousand times and still learn more. Great. Yeah, I mean, that's that's very true. So... <laughs> Yeah, well, this is a good exercise. Um, I don't know if you want to do more tonight or today or leave it here, but because um, we did cover a lot of ideas here. Probably leave it here, thinking next week you can play a game live or something. Yeah. Or I can get another nice replay. Yeah. I'll definitely play more throughout the week. Mm -hmm. How close do you feel like you are to actually making a beginner strategy video for your channel on this uh -huh, not close at all okay and look if if you decide that it's not going to be something you want to do totally fine with me but 
I'll still think it would be cool if you did. I'll still, no, I'll definitely love to cover it. Agricola is, it's a popular game that I want to, like, I want to have it on my channel, but I, I don't make guides unless I feel I'm good enough at the game. Gotcha, yeah. But like, I, I don't want to give misleading information. <laughs> I mean, you could have me fact check it or something, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely will before I post anything. <laughs> well, I think you're on uh, a good trajectory here. Yeah, at, at the rate I'm learning, it might seem far away, but it's probably closer than I think. Yeah, I mean, there, it's not going to be the easiest thing, but you're, you're definitely getting places. Yeah. So. All right. Well, take it easy. I'll see you soon. Thanks very much, Lumen. All right. See you later. Bye.